Drivers often dismiss plate racing as a crapshoot, a lottery, a luck of the draw in which anyone can take the win. Although these high banks often throw up a little bit of chaos and unpredictability, it must be said that super speedway racing has produced some talented and knowledgeable specialists. These rare few have learned that the devil is in the details. Who's willing to sell their soul today and add a Daytona victory to their list of accomplishments? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch round three of the PRL NASCAR Truck Series, and you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth is Adam Lindgren. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Cracker Zambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Adam, you talk about tracks that demand respect. It's funny how Daytona continues to be seen as, as this monolith of oval racing. Well, Joe, it's, the, it's at the very least a memorable track to attend as a spectator and most definitely as a driver. Daytona International Speedway is 2.5 miles of flat out racing. While the real-life trucks are taking a weekend off for the holidays, the PRL series regulars and many iRacers relish the chance for a win that is derived from more than strategy than from raw pace, as the restrictor plates even the field here at Daytona. But don't think for a second that winning at this mammoth track doesn't take skill. With the new engine regulations this season, the trucks hit the limiter around Daytona at about 7.8 thousand RPM, well below the peak of their torque curve meaning having to check up for any reason could see you drop to the back as your engine attempts to recover its lost revs. While some drivers choose to be conservative and try and claw their way to the front with 10 laps to go, with only 50 laps around this place, we'll see many of our unlucky drivers from last season and the past few races desperately fighting for a win at the front, and that will likely lead to chaos and costly repairs. Speaking of repairs and paying for them, Joe, we've got a few folks we'd like to talk about today, do we not? Yes, we do. That's because this season of the PRL NASCAR Truck Series is brought to you by Established Traffic Control. Founded in 2005, EST is a leader in traffic control and traffic safety in the state of Pennsylvania through maintaining great relationships and providing exceptional customer service. In addition to being able to provide all you need for traffic safety, ETC makes custom signs. From street signs to company logos and everything in between, these custom signs make great gifts and wall decor. If you have a design, ETC can make it. Shipping is available. For more info, visit EstablishedTraffic.com or email Brennan Chatley at bchatley at EstablishedTraffic.com. So we take a look out at the warm-up, waiting for the qualifying to start. We've got some points to go over. We're three rounds in now, so let's start, of course, with the driver's points. Uh, up first, as... Uh, we take a glance at exactly how tight it is, which is very, very tight because Bradley Hawley and Jason Jacoby have only one point between them for first. And then for third place, look at that, McFarland and Sink and Champagne as well. Two points separating them for third place. It is very, very close here for the top five in this championship, but there's still a lot of racing left to go. What about the team's championship here, Adam? Well, we have a very close battle there as well. Only seven points dividing first and second with Whataback Fat and Furious featuring Bradley Holly and John LaBaff up at the first spot. Then second, we have the Ford Entertainment Group Motorsports Group of Jason Jacoby and Gerald Ford. And we have the Whataback Back Row Racing with, with Lane and Sink there in the third position, 36 pack back there. And then we have in fourth, Gray Riders who fell back one spot in the last session 40 points behind and right behind them just one point behind them is hard knock sim sports team number one with mike richter and carol and of course the race details in case anybody watching has not seen one of these races before as mentioned we are in round three and uh they do get a drop week in this 10 week season that's what that little droplet implies so if you have a bad race well for a few drivers, I have to have a feeling that today will be one of those drop weeks. Uh, it is a fixed setup, though, here in this truck series, so nobody can really find much of an advantage out there trying to tweak the minutia of these trucks to find speed around Daytona. Now, it does say that the race length is 50 laps, but it is time limited. 55 minutes is as far as they are allowed to go. So they're gonna have to hustle and try and stay clean if they wanna get all 50 laps in. If we're frank, we're not expecting that. They do have an instant cap uh, at 17. 
And that could also cause problems because if you bump someone a little bit too hard from behind, those four X's can rack up and you could be out of here even though uh, there's a, a good chance that uh, you could come out without any incidents at all here at a super speedway. But we'll see how that plays out in the end. Today's race uh, is also brought to you by Whataback Racing. We heard their mention a lot there in the points championship. They're one of the various teams that competes here in the PRL, and a huge thanks goes out to them for helping bring today's broadcast to air. Uh, so obviously we want to give them as much gratitude as we can for all that they've done to uh, help us come to air today. I do believe, let's see, we've got about three minutes left until we get our qualifying in. Now, for the qualifying, Adam, uh, I expect it's probably going to be the second lap around here that's really going to be the one that counts. Definitely. You want to stay high for that first lap. Well, high enough that you you want to try and take as much road as you can on the first lap. That way you give the truck enough time to really spool up its engine. Like I said during the track description, we're talking about kind of an underpowered engine around here based upon where the rev limiter is situated on these plate tracks. So you really need to give the engine as much time to spool up as possible. So you're not going to hit that rev limiter as we, as we go around this track in fourth gear for qualifying. And with this fixed set being a race set, they're going to have trouble getting up to good speed. So you're definitely going to want to make sure it's that second lap that's going to count. And, you know, speaking of that rev limiter, uh, one thing that I'm always curious about when it comes to oval racing is will the pit stops be limited by tires or will it be limited by fuel? Now, around this track, uh, I know enough that usually it's not limited by tires, but if we could glance at the weather here today, they have gotten a scorcher down there in Florida. And Adam, is that is the temperature enough to make the tires a, a, a factor in when you come and play the tire card? Well, 75 degrees air temp is not really that much of an issue. So that means overheating is not going to be that big of a problem. But the track temp of 119 is going to put significant wear on these tires. And so things like slowing down for the pits, like we just watched there with Thomas Sink really struggling to do that, that's going to be a big problem. And so really, I don't think tire wear is going to be that much of an issue. But do start to watch for those. If we do end up getting a long green flag run, start to watch for these trucks to get loose off of the corners. When we start to see that happen, which probably will be 20, 25 laps into a run, that's about half of our race distance, mind you. That's about when tire strategy might start to become a thing. But we're definitely limited pretty much on fuel for this race, Joe. All right. Well, we'll see how many cautions we get as well, because that might uh, play a factor in that fuel strategy. Just waiting for the last minute and a half to tick away here in the warm-up. The drivers have really been trying to come to grips, quite literally, uh, with the weather conditions here in the warm-up, and some are having more trouble than others. You can see the warm-up times there on the left, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to those as we have some fast drivers farther down the bottom who haven't put too many laps in quite yet, so that could be jumbled up compared to what we see in the qualifying. But, uh, this will be an interesting one to see, especially considering how many drivers we have here today, because this is a pretty high attendance for this race, Adam. Yeah, we've got a full 36 car field, I believe. And so this is a very high attendance for this series. Uh, last race, we didn't have quite this many, but we were close. And so these drivers, we have a lot of them showing up who have missed last week. And I mean, like, Considering that this is a holiday week, that's actually kind of a big surprise. So a lot of these guys are really taking the opportunity to come here to this track that has historically been a place where anyone can really come away with the win if they're good at managing strategy around Daytona. Those watching on a delay, we're uh, airing this, or well, we're actually holding this race on uh, Independence Day Eve, if that's a thing, uh, waiting for uh, a, a day off tomorrow. And uh, the drivers uh, showing up probably have a little bit of time tonight to stay up a little bit late, especially those on the East Coast, considering it's already 9 o'clock over there. Thankfully, that time limit, they won't be held up uh, too late and get up uh, tomorrow in the morning, get the grill ready. But you can see that the warm-up is done, so the qualifying getting started. And we'll see who has figured out how to go fast under in just two laps around a super speedway. 
I have to admit, Adam, even though I'm like a lot of people, I, I'm happy to hop in, into some of the oval cars and give this a go because it's a lot of fun and it's pretty easy to just pick up. I've never been incredibly fast at doing this. Have you ever found yourself uh, uh, to be pretty agile at, at managing to, to get the car around here quick when it comes to qualifying? Qualifying is really difficult. You gotta, I mean, I have found some strategies that help work. It's not something that really is super intuitive and it really depends on which car you're driving with these trucks staying in the middle of the track is actually probably going to be best with this new engine package because it just doesn't have the grunt to get you around the top side quite quick enough to go fast we're going to see which drivers have driven enough practice laps to notice that as we're seeing the 12 here go around the bottom of the track which is an interesting strategy and really you want to extend the track as much as possible to get as much run up to the first lap that you can but at the same time, you don't want to bog down the engine trying to fight the high 31 degree banking around these corners. So as Colin Carroll takes the green flag, we'll see whether or not his strategy is going to work out. He's going to take the middle of the track now as they go as he goes on his first lap. Yep, you're right. He's just kind of hovering right there, smack dab in the middle. Uh, just below those dotted lines as now he comes into turns one and two. So he seems to at least suss something out. That or he's lucking into it pretty well. And his steering wheel is staying pretty smooth around here, but only getting up to about 144, 145 all by his lonesome. And that's the other thing you want to be very careful of. You want to make sure to put as little steering input as humanly possible around these qualifying laps. That way you're not scrubbing up any speed with any excess tire wear. I think the first one that will get across is going to be Nicholas Delp. Actually, no, I take that back. Looks like Josh Daniels, one of the first ones, and he is up at the top still after three of them have crossed the line. We're going to see what Carroll can do in this number 12 as he comes to the trioval. Current pull time of a 51.908, and he has, oh, this is incredibly slow, a 102.5. I thought that seemed oddly slow from him. I wonder if he's intentionally trying to put it in the back here. That's definitely a possibility. Like I said, some drivers like to take it really easy on the early laps and try not to get into trouble. But when the big one happens in front of you, there's not a lot of places you can go. And with the track temperature as high as we have today, I would be very, very reticent to, to try and stay in the back and try and avoid a wreck. Delp held the pole momentarily, but Josh Daniels has come across for his second one for a 51.583. So let's see if Delp can respond. First one was pretty good, a 51.582. Uh, and that is good enough for pole. Front row currently the 58 and the 07. Currently we only have had We've only have had 13 drivers jump on track, so showing that track position early on not going to be super important as these drivers are going to wait to see what happens during the race. But the good news is the temperature has gone down to about 117 degrees out on track. I'll keep checking on that to see if it starts to lower some more. I wonder if maybe they've spotted a cloud coming towards the track and they're just trying to wait it out and take it at the last minute. I'm not sure. As Jason Jacoby finds himself up at the top ahead of Delp now. Yeah, Jacoby really doing a good job there. I, I, he might have waited on purpose for that for that cloud to get by. But I mean, like this, you don't really have that opportunity. By the time you get up to speed and get that first lap in, usually the clouds have cleared. So he just got lucky, I believe. But he, I mean, like you can't put it behind these guys. It does take skill to be quite good. Ryan Brogan coming around, currently sits in seventh. Champagne should be taking, I believe, his first time lap. Yes, he does indeed. That is a 52-4. That's good enough for eighth position as he gets the car wound up. Second one again should be the lap that we need to watch out for. He's playing it a yeah, Champ Champagne was playing it a little bit safe. They're staying a little high off the yellow line, whereas if we're watching Brian Brogan, he's really fighting to keep that truck down there low. You may not think it's hard to do that, but trying to keep the truck down low on that yellow line while not clipping the, the apron is really actually quite difficult in these trucks to sight that. Oh, and he ran out of time for qualifying. He didn't get out there soon enough, so he didn't complete that second lap. 
that brings us to our qualifying grid for today. Jason Jacoby finds him or Jacoby, excuse me, uh, starts in first with Nicholas Delp in second next to him. Then Josh Daniels starts P3, followed by Scott Metcalf in fourth. Gregory Dice will be P5, and flanking him is Sean Dower. Brian Brogan will be seventh with Jean-Francois Champagne in eighth. Mitchell Clark starts ninth in the outside of row five is completed by Frank Pichik. Then we have Mike Richter coming home in 11th position on the grid today. We have Colin Carroll next to him in 12th. And that ends all of your qualifiers with times. Next up, it's by points. Bradley Hawley in 13th position. Next to Brain Johnson in 14th position. Andrew Melvin 15th and Colton Lane 16th position. Starting row 9 is Dominic Pagine and Tyler Pluff, a newcomer, one that we haven't seen race yet this season, in 18th position. Rob Haynes in row 10 and also alongside of Brandon Walter rounding out your top 20. Thomas Sink starts 21st with Charles Sumner in 22nd. Then it's Billy Hartman in 23rd. Jeffrey Ford starts 24th with Eric Roberts, 25th behind Tim outside of there. In 26th position, it is Adam Zemke. Then you've got Robert Besaw Jr. starting P27, Jeffrey Smith in P28, and Kevin Fetty in 29th. 30th is rounded up by John LaBaff. I'll just take the rest of these. Jake Hounshell in 31st with Brennan Shatley in 32nd, Mike Donahue 33rd, Austin Hunter 34th, Jason Hounshell 35th, and Nicholas Hunter in 36th position. Anybody who didn't qualify with the hopes that they would maybe be put at the back, uh, maybe a little bit disappointed seeing that they are smack dab in the middle of the field on this start. So in their attempts at trying to avoid uh, being in the middle of the mess, they may have put themselves there. Yeah, it's really, it'll be interesting to see whether or not we have a race to get to the back of the field because that kind of defeats the purpose of that strategy. So some of these guys are going to be forced to race up there at the front and race hard even when they don't want to. And even if we get single file, that doesn't guarantee that something bad isn't going to happen to you. Some guys are going to be taking that single file opportunity to make passes. And so, really, there's no way to avoid risk here at Daytona. Guess you just got to take it as it comes at you as the Mustang pace car now enters turn three into the high banking. It's going to be Jacoby leading the way given control of the field in a moment. Then we'll hopefully go racing in 450 laps. We'll see if they can beat that timer. They'll need to try and stay clean uh, for most of the duration of this race. It is as it takes a long time to get around under caution at this track. Off of turn four, Mustang pace car getting ready to peel into pit lane. There he goes. Jacoby waiting. Green flag is out. He gets on the loud pedal and gets a decent jump over Delp. Already looking to get a little bit of help from Josh Daniels who hovers behind him, not wanting to quite get the bump draft yet. That high line slowly getting its own speed up, but right now it's the bottom that's starting to pull away. We have a lot of people diving from that high line into the low line, but that is not the case that back there in about sixth or seventh position with Scott Metcalf and Sean Dower, they're hanging out up top. Interesting if they want to try and get that top line going this early on in the race. Now, your order is Jacoby, Daniels, and Dice for the top three. And then you get to the fourth car in line, still single file, the 45th of Brogan. Now we're getting the fifth car in line, single file, that is Dower. And finally, we've got a two-wide uh, two train forming as Dower thinks about maybe ducking up. He comes back down and then goes back up once again. Got to make up your mind eventually here, bud. We actually have a breakaway now of the first 14 cars. Bradley Hawley leads the second pack, and he actually went down below the apron on the backstretch to get back there into that second pack. So he's trying to avoid trouble, but he's in 15th position. There are 36 cars in this race. That's not exactly the position he wanted to be in right now at the beginning of the race. I don't think. No, but uh, with the expected cautions, I wonder if it'll be easy for him to regain and get back up to that group when it requires as up at the front Daniels coming down low as he takes the lead away from Jacoby up high Sean Dower and the purple machine is looking to gather some speed with a little help from Delp and Metcalf 
Metcalf there on the back is looking really unstable in that high line. He's having a hard time staying on the back of Dower, I believe. And so he's really struggling there as Jason Jacoby goes up to that high line to try and get around Joshua Daniels through one. He's got a head of steam. He was down low and then he popped up in front of Dower. Dower is going to continue to give him a little bit of help down the super stretch. Now they've, they've got Delp ahead of Daniels as well in third. Do all three of them duck down low into turn three? Could even maybe potentially see Metcalf try and sneak in there. No, he's stuck on the outside. Delp does not duck down low. He's going to stay to the high side. Dower does join on the low side as Jacoby is going to lead this next lap. And yeah, now is not a time to make enemies. So it makes sense that Delp is staying high to help out Metcalf and make sure that he doesn't drop off the back of this pack. You want to make as many friends as possible early on in this race. You can capitalize on those friendships and help have them help you get to the front late on in the race. Talk about a breakaway. They're starting to drop Brogan and Champagne behind them. But then you get back to ninth place and Mitchell Clark has seriously dropped off. He's about to be swallowed up by a bunch of cars, including Braden Johnson, who is freight training him down the backstretch currently. Yeah, this breakaway is not really working out for them. They're losing way too much time. And actually, the group at the front is now single file. So the big risk actually is there in the backpacks. All these guys who backed up trying to avoid risk, they're in the most risky position at the moment. What the, that, that one group of four that I saw with the head of steam, that was Johnson, Melvin, Pluff, and Ford. They seem to be doing pretty well as we got a car off trying to figure out who that it's was. Adam Zemke. Adam Zemke has spun exit trioval. And no, no caution. He was blinking on my screen, so I'm not exactly what, I'm not exactly sure what caused it, but he... Uh, slid down to the infield, so it was not a problem, and he kept going, but he's well back, and he's got a little bit of damage. And he's not the only one. We have quite a few drivers, actually, who have had some trouble with connect connectivity issues tonight, so hopefully that doesn't become a chronic issue and we continue to have a clean race. Temperature hasn't changed much since qualifying. It's only 116 degrees out on track as we watch our lead pack being led by Jacoby. Kobe with Dower behind him, Dice in third. Ooh, a little bobble from second and third place. They're not sure if they were thinking about trying to get a run or if they were just trying to collect the car. But Dower's doing a good job leading this pack. He's in, well, Jacoby's doing a good job leading the pack. Dower's actually doing a really good job of managing the gap to Jacoby. He's keeping his engine cool by staying just about a half car length back, but not giving too much of a gap that makes the guys behind him want to go around. So that's actually helping him stay connected to Jacoby and stay in that second position, which is really the preferred position around here. But looks like everyone's having a little bit of trouble keeping the truck straight as they go through the trial. Start yourself a jar for every time I accidentally say cars around here. Uh, these are trucks out there. This top group is currently down. Oh, and we got a driver poking up to the high side. I think that's Daniels. It is indeed comes out from behind Metcalf, thinks that he's got enough to try and get in front of him, but that turns out not to be the case. The 07 stalls out once they hit turn three, and now he's got to jump back in line to where he was in uh, sixth place. But currently, this top group is seven cars deep going back to Brogan if Brogan uh, and Champagne can manage to catch them up here, those few car lengths that they are behind. Yeah, and Braden Johnson behind Champagne. He's about 3.1 behind. They're holding steady right now, not losing time, not gaining time. But Braden Johnson, that whole pack behind him, all the way back to, I believe, all the way back to Colton Lane and Charles Sumner, all the way back to them. They're all single file now. So these this back pack might actually be able to gain some time if they're able to get organized and get bunched up to one another and start pushing hard, but they're actually lost about two tenths that last lap. Question for you, Adam. In the road racing side, we'll often see draft tracks play out in a case of fuel strategy, fuel saving, so you can stay in line and try and jump them in the pits with a slightly shorter stop. Is, is that viable here even with the cautions to try and gain some positions? 
it is viable, but you have to be close enough to that to the leaders in order to make that viable. If they have to take an extra couple seconds of fuel and you're a couple seconds behind them, that fuel saving's not gonna pay off. So these guys in the back have gotta be really, really careful to make sure that they get up to that front pack and then start to fuel save. Otherwise, this fuel saving's really not gonna be really good. I'm just kind of wondering with guys like Daniels, who uh, has been making attempts, but we've heard him lifting recently. Maybe he, at the far back of these top five, could be trying to save a little something since he is with the top pack. So uh, the red and black machine that you see fifth in line is Daniels in the 07. This time not popping out as much as we used to see. As we go on board with Daniels right now, it looks like he's looking to possibly cool his engine going up that high. It's, that might be the case, or he's just taking a break and not worrying too much about staying low, but he's popping up high quite a bit, which makes me think he might be overheating a little bit. But it's possible that he's just trying to manage the gap and manage his pace. But I'm actually more, most curious about Jason Jacoby up front. He has won, he won last week, and that's really, he won in very interesting circumstances with a, with a botched pit stop. And so it's interesting that he's just plowing ahead, leading this race and content to do so. I would have thought, being the leader of the championship right now, he would fall back and use that pit, that fuel strategy and try and save some fuel here to shorten his pit stop later. Doesn't he seem interested yet? And despite all our all of our predictions, we're a fifth of the way through the race and no cautions yet. We're looking at the second pack now, and this involves Bradley Holly up at the front of it. You can see they're mostly single file up on the high side, and then you've got a group down on the low side including, well, Braden Johnson and the four that I had pointed out before that seemed awful fast. They are no longer the fastest. In fact, they're starting to go back to the tail of this train. Yeah, Bradley Hawley looks like he's tired of being in this backpack. He's trying to drag them up forward, and it's actually working. They've cut about seven tenths off of that lead pack in the last two laps. So they're on the charge, and they're on their way to the front. And it looks like... Bradley Holly definitely wants to get back up there to the lead where he's most comfortable, and he's definitely thinking about fuel as he pulls up there. He wants to get up to that front pack and then back it off and wait until the cautions come out or until he can pit and make good fuel strategy. If you saw a flash of red in the pit lane, that was Adam Zemke, who has come down probably because of his uh, damage problems. I'm certain that he'll go a lap down with his being under green. So sure that his day is going to go quite how he wanted. And look down there at the bottom lane. The 38 truck is really starting to make a big run. Coming up there on the bottom, trying to catch up to Bradley Holly there. Actually, sorry, that's a 77. What an impressive push by him. Certainly is. As uh, I believe that is Braden Johnson. Correct, yes, yeah, so that's Brady Johnson there on the bottom end. Yeah, appearing 77 on our screen with the custom numbers, but that's Braden Johnson in the registered 36 position, followed by the 37 of Andrew Melvin. They decided they decide that the bottom lane was going to work better, and they pushed straight past Bradley Holly on the top side. So interesting, that's an interesting thing from him. 77 is using that momentum to continue to fly forward and has just about pulled his train all the way ahead of the one that they were hiding out on the low side of. They've got a new clinger at the back, though. Uh, that is Jeffrey Smith in there in the number 96. And actually, Brian Brogan has fallen off of the front pack, so that's going to actually give a little bit more draft to Braden Johnson behind him to try and drag them back up to the front. Completely passed now, and that second train immediately ducks down low. So it is one long snake going all the way back to Eric Roberts in 23rd. In the front of it is ninth place in the 77. Well, Joe, we expected a little bit more chaos than this, but this actually brings out an interesting strategy game as these drivers start to get further into the race to see who has been saving fuel back here and who is just going balls to the walls and really trying to get out there and make something happen and get a first win here. Yeah, I mean, it'd be wild if this stayed green completely throughout. 
be curious for those uh, stat masters out there who know how many times we had a fully green race on a super speedway. And Brian Brogan is going this. backwards. Yeah, look at that as he gets, just goes backwards there. I mean, that's what happens when you get hung out on the back of the train with these trucks with their low RPMs with the litter the way it is. He's going to have a really hard time catching up there. But that outside line now that they've gone out there, they've caught up to Scott Metcalf, who is out there on the outside, and that line is going nowhere. But it looks like Joshua Daniels has jumped out in front of that line and is trying to pull it up front as well. Well, it was certainly going somewhere before, and they thought that they maybe could hop on. Uh, but unfortunately, these freeloaders have stopped the momentum. Daniels now trying to see if he can drag them forward once again. I am really surprised that that second train caught the first train. I don't think I've ever actually seen that here on iRacing in all the super speedway races I've called. Where, oh, we got another driver who tried to join in. That was Greg Dice. He very nearly caused an accident. Yeah, definitely stalled it out for sure, but that big check up there on the high side about half a lap ago has really split up this field. It's almost all the way back to single file now, and everyone's quite a bit spread out. So looks like all these drivers are struggling a little bit for grip. They're not super confident in being able to snug up behind the trucks in front of them. So that's going to be interesting going forward in this race. Well, I guess that high line is the hipster line. It's cool until everybody else does it because everybody is now abandoned up the high side, except for just a stalwart few. We are still being led by Jacoby up in the number 88, who is being chased by Dower, pushing him along diligently. With Dice in third, the driver that I mentioned a little bit earlier, who tried to jump up to the high side. Not sure if that was to stall them out or if he genuinely wanted to join that train. He continues to poke his nose out just as the train comes up again. And that front pack is quite a bit larger than it used to be, all the way back to 23rd position. And then we have an, a, about a 12 and a half second gap back to Dominic Regine in 24th. And that pack is going backwards. They're losing about a second a lap. So they're going to be the first people to get lapped, and it's quite a big pack. But we've got to ways until that happens. Yeah, everyone back there is really the ones hoping for a caution. It's getting a little frantic up here now. Look at this. Yeah, they might get what they're hoping for. <laughs> Drivers jockeying around and really trying to slingshot their way forward. It is always safest up at the very front in most cases here in Super Speedway Racing, hence why we see drivers continuing to try to want to move forward. But Jacoby has, is, has just got a command of this thing. Well, Sean Jower hasn't really just tried to put him early on was Nicholas Delp and Delp just got into a position where he couldn't do that anymore, but Joshua Daniels and Scott Metcalf, who are up there at the high side, really trying to make things work, they're not having much success. They continue to push forward on the straights, but this time they haven't got much of a run, and they might have to slip down here, but looks like that bottom line is packing up again, and that allows Joshua Daniels to get a run, but they really haven't been making much progress. Dykes almost looks like he's getting a little sick of running in third. He made another attempt down the back stretch to try and get ahead and then came back in line when he lost speed. Get the feeling that the 57 is starting to lose patience. And even though there's a lot of racing left to go, is getting eager to jump up higher than the bottom step of the podium. They come into turn one once more with 30 to go. Either he's losing patience or he's losing tires. This is lap 20 of this run, and that's quite a ways into this run. And so these rear tires are going to start to get a little tired, and because of how blocky this truck is, it really puts a lot of stress on that right, right rear to get that truck around these corners. And so that's the first tire that's going to overheat and start to go on these trucks. So that might be why we're seeing so much instability from these drivers right now, is that front pack is really starting to tighten up there they all did a big checkup entering into the trial yeah, we see some wobbly exits off of that high banking and in fact very wobbly coming off of the tri oval that was dower who went below the yellow line and is now able to come back up but he starts to lose control once again he checks up most of the drivers try to go up to his high side except for scott metcalf who also has to lift himself and i think we might get a new leader because delp took advantage of all of that running up to the top 
And I think he's got Daniels with him. Yeah, that really shook up everything. That J Jacoby lost his support there. And so that requires Gregory Dice to get up there behind him and really push him forward. But that top line now is starting to move. Nicholas Delp with Joshua Daniels tucked in right behind. And they're going to go screaming by Jason Jacoby on the front strip. First person in a while to demote Jacoby is Nicholas Delp. And I'm not sure how long he's going to be able to hold on to this because here comes Josh Daniels abandoning him easily, very quickly, and says, thanks for the help. Goodbye. Joshua Daniels has been fighting on his lonesome to get to the front for quite a while, hung up there on the high side. He's not feeling any love for these guys in the front. He's just going to take the lead and not look back. New friends for the 07. He is a rock. He is an island. They're coming around once more to complete another lap. I kind of wonder, with the big bobble that we saw for Delp, uh, or for Dower, rather, as it looks like uh, Dower now going to come back up to the front as he gets help himself from Jacoby. Is it worth the risk, if you're having those kinds of wobbles with the tires, to, to come in and take them, considering we haven't had any cautions yet? Well, with... I mean, considering the wobbles are happening, I would stay out, actually. I would I would stay out and wait for the wreck to happen because then you get, get free tires, free fuel because everyone's got a fuel going into to finish this race. They only have 85% fuel around this track, so everyone's got to take some fuel, so everyone's going to have to do a pit stop. So I would definitely try and wait it out and wait for the caution, try and run as long as I could. Now, everybody but a few drivers are staying out to, to wait. We did have uh, Clark, Carroll, Richter, and Pichak uh, come in. But everybody hoping to take advantage of the caution while they are not the caution themselves. Completing yet another lap. Your leader currently Dower, Jacoby second, Dice third, Daniels back to fourth. And then fifth is Champagne, all of them in a straight line. And that group we talked about that pitted, they're all teammates, all four of them running the same paint scheme tonight. So they all have a strategy that they have played out beforehand and they're just following it to perfection, so we'll see whether or not it pays off for them. Curiously, it's just about at halfway. Yeah. Take so a look take at a those. Look at Richter. Yeah, all those, all those drivers there, they definitely have a strategy that they're going to play out there. It looks like they're going to have to drop one of their teammates there because if they back up for them, that's losing them a lot of time. But, yeah, Colin, Richter, uh, sorry, sorry, Carol, Richter, and Clark now all running in 32nd through 34th. They're going to have to hope for a caution very soon so that they can stay out and require all these other guys to pit. We should note that they are a lap down, and they'll want to try and get that lap back. So as we watch the lead cars come down the super stretch into turn three, no time for stragglers. If you fall behind, that's on you. You gotta fend for yourself. Out of four this time, any takers here in the top group? Not seeing any. Yeah, and at this point in the race, I believe the best strategy would probably be to not make any risks, not do anything dangerous until the green flag pit stops have run their course, at which point then it's no holds barred, it's time to go. But these guys are really just hanging out of their trucks at this point. They're not going to try anything crazy, not going to try any big moves. It's time to just wait it out and wait for those green flag pit stops. Well, all I can say is don't listen to the men in the booth because we kept saying we're going to have a lot of cautions. We're not going to be able to get through this whole race, and we've already passed the halfway point. We haven't seen a single caution. We've seen one car off track. Uh, we've seen another have a little bit of a slide. But other than that, this has been incredibly, incredibly clean and I'd say relatively well-behaved racing from these drivers. Definitely, these drivers are really proving that they understand this truck and its behavior and characteristics at high speeds. And that's not something you can say about a lot of drivers on the iRacing service. These trucks around Daytona tend to be a pretty calamitous affair. So this is actually a really impressive drive from all these drivers. Hopping on board with Daniels. Fourth car in line, the number 07. Winding the truck up to about 186 miles an hour before they come into the banking. The exalted 
are of dice. Uh, Wafts uh, a little bit high. Oh. And pit stops are happening. Let's see whether everyone can make it. And the answer is no. We have an accident on track. Looks like it was Joshua Daniels, possibly. Well, lane involved. It's a big one. Let's see. I think that started from the pit stops. Yes, it did. And was that Delp? Was that was Delp the one? Yeah, Delp was the one that started it. He starts to woe the truck up and then loses it. Weaves back in front of Scott Metcalf. Yeah, so it's Nicholas Delp who Yeah, he just had trouble getting that truck woed down. You really have to adjust the brake bias to make sure you don't get into a bigger accident here, so we're gonna take a look at Delp right now. Yeah, uh, we'll watch Delp's, and then after that, if we could watch Thomas Sink's perspective. He didn't get out scot-free, but boy, what great avoidance maneuvers did he have today. Yeah, with Delp, it looks like a classic case of having your, having your brake bias just put in the wrong position and not being able to get onto the, not being able to get woed down quite quick enough. All right, here's what the Illinois driver saw. Accident starts to happen in front of him. Checks up, picks his way through. Look at that. Got a little little bit of a hit from the side, but in all things concerned, that was some beautiful evasive uh, moves. As if we'll come back live, he's now already coming in, and the sun starts to go away. That's definitely going to help cool this track down it's only gone up one degree since the beginning of the race but these drivers are definitely going to appreciate that and with all these pit stops happening that actually filters jason jacoby back to the front now, i think jacoby managed to get into the pits before uh before the yellow flag came out if he didn't let me see actually if he had a black flag clear here i'm not, I'm not seeing that Maybe if he did have a penalty, he already served it. I'm not sure, but uh, Jacoby had already committed. He was coming in, hit the pit lane, and look at this. Who's behind him? A bunch of cars a lap down, unfortunately. Richter, Clark, and Peachock all there. Yes, but guess who comes out in second position after all this shakes out? Jean-Francois Champagne. We were talking about him a week ago, and his big charged through the field how he came from almost last back up to the 10th or 11th position and so he is definitely in a good position now before anybody hopes to hear jean francois saying i am a racer like you ricky bobby he's from canada he is not french although it could be french canadian but uh, the number 13 as you said should be able to cycle his way through so we're just past halfway to get that first caution of the day. Here's hoping that cautions do not breed cautions for the remainder of the race. They've done such a good job uh, keeping it clean thus far. I can tell you that everybody pitted at that point, with that being right at the pit stops. Only drivers still in the pits are Delp, uh, Metcalf, Sumner, all who were involved in that incident. Helm shell as well. And one unfortunate person who really got the bad end of the stick here was Sean Dower. He was up there running in the second position when that caution came out and because of the accident that happened to him, he's now sitting in the pits for his second pit stop, I believe. Yes, yeah, second pit stop. So... He's out right now, and that's really unfortunate for him. Yeah, sad to see. After Dower being up towards the front for so long, find himself sent all the way to the back. Could still yet have time to try and climb his way forward. Just going back to check, actually, to... see what happened with Dower. And we're in the middle of the tr drivers trying to sort out how the field's going to run right now as 
we'll let you know what we know, but it looks like the drivers don't really know where they end up right now either, so this caution might be extended by a lap or two. Um, I apologize if you already reported this. Did we mention that Dower uh, did, did a 360 on his way out of the pits? No, we did not. Uh, after his pit stop, Dower, and, and I wonder if maybe this is why he came in for a second time, he found himself turned around and uh, lost a number of positions. So the 62 had uh, an interesting adventure here under caution. Now, let's see if we go back green this time. Are the lights out on the pace car? Looks like they Here's are. they are. All right, so we have a new cast of characters up front, and a couple of them are surprises. Andrew Melvin, a surprise. Jeffrey Ford, a surprise. Rob Haynes, a surprise. One person who's not a surprise, but will be a surprise to Jason Jacoby, is Bradley Hawley. After hanging out in the middle of the pack, he's completed this pit stop and this caution period and fit, found his way up to the third position. That is the last thing that Jacoby wanted to see. Well, they'll have to stay clean for 29 more laps if they want to see the checkered flag without having to sit behind this pace car another time. See if they can manage that. They've so far proved us wrong in terms of their ability out there, and I'm glad to be proven wrong because this has been a fascinating race amongst the drivers. Excuse me, 19 more laps, not 29 more laps. Adam, I tried to do math. Cardinal sin. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, so <laughs> we come up to the banking one more time. And they're going to be released pretty soon by this Mustang pace car. Champagne shuffled all the way back to 22nd after we thought he would be well forward. Is this new cast of characters that Adam mentioned going to change the chemistry of the racing? We'll find out soon because the green flag is out once again for our first restart of the day. Jacoby leads up ahead of Holly behind him. Holly wastes no time in trying to push that blue car forward. Looks like quite a few of the drivers further back have decided that there's probably going to be another caution, so they're still hanging out. Whereas up front, Jason Jacoby, Bradley Holly, and Braden Johnson have decided that they're not going to hang out. They are nose to tail, very tight, as looks like Braden Johnson jumps, tries to jump up to the high side, but he's going to get pinched there. They might get freight train, but the 31 actually lets him in. Not willing to make it three wide quite yet, so I guess the 31 figured we still got time to go here. And uh, looks like uh, they will be able to continue on as they come around off of the fourth turn for the first lap of green back racing once again up to the high side. Interesting move from Jacoby. They're all bunched up there in that front pack all the way back to 12, which is Kevin Fetty. But then it's quite a bit more separated back all the way down quite a bit further back to Brian Brogan. But then Brendan Chadley looks like he was trying to complete, trying to catch back up to the pack after getting around the track from a EOL penalty and he's back in 27th position, but this front pack, really tight. Yeah, looking back farther, I'm seeing a few drivers actually hang to the side and lift to let everybody through. So they think, seem to think that something is gonna happen based on their gut instinct. Up the front stretch, Jacoby's still trying to work that high side, but it is Bradley Holly who is gonna lead this lap just barely just as the blue truck to his outside starts to creep ahead. It's amazing how this series always ends up with the championship leaders at the top of the field battling for the lead. We got Jason Jacoby, P1 in the championship, Bradley Hawley, P2 in the championship, and they're leading both lines now as they go into the backstretch neck and neck. I know I'm the stand-in here for this one, but uh, I have to say there's a reason they're championship leaders probably. Uh, Jacoby, who decided to go high earlier just a lap and a half ago. Now ducks uh, down low ahead of Holly. Thinks that Bradley's got a little bit more pace than he expected, maybe. That's upset that high line, which is now starting to lose a bit of momentum. But back there, it looks like Thomas Sink is having some trouble hanging on to the back of that front pack. So 
it's really interesting to see how this this race ebbs and flows. Getting one driver reporting some blinking from the number 70. That would be Mike Donahue is a little bit uh, in the middle of this top pack. Thankfully, he's not really close to anybody. That truck is all kind of got its uh, space to itself. We go on board now with Braden Johnson, the head of the train to the outside, being helped along by the 37 of Melvin. A lot of drivers have been talking in the forums about side draft not being a thing, and that's definitely true. The side draft is not yet simulated in iRacing, but regular draft is, and if these drivers on the bottom line keep creeping up half a lane, that gives you some draft, so it does encourage people to get close to the door of the people on the bottom lane, and that can definitely cause an accident. One we haven't really seen up at the front a lot uh, until that caution is Rob Haynes. He's just kind of hovering there, down third in the, the, the lower line. The number 29 truck that you see. I wonder if he's kind of a dark horse we need to keep an eye on as the 36 is now going to take the lead away from Jacoby. Braden Johnson still using that momentum on the high side to his advantage. Yeah, that high side has been a, a bit more nose to tail than the low side, and that's allowed Braden Johnson to get the run on Jacoby. Jacoby has not been getting the support from behind him that he needs. That low line quite a bit separated from about six in that line on back, whereas that high line has got five trucks nose to tail as they go north. Here's hoping that it is too early for fireworks here with this holiday week upon us that will stay green to the end. Both lines of trucks competing to see which line, which lane is going to allow them to maybe sneak the win away. Could it stay clean all the way to there to where who gets the shot off the final corner and maybe take it by inches at the finish line? So far, it's been pointing towards that. Nobody's really been making wild moves. Been uh, an aggressor that's risked everybody else's vehicle out there. Jake Houndshell backed off quite a bit coming off a of four in the 0-2 truck back there in the green and black. But he's now picked up the pace again, and he's going to try and close back in on these front guys. Those front three in the top line definitely going to need his help to get past Jason Jacoby. This top group is starting to thin out a little bit, I'm noticing as well. Uh, Kevin Fetty is dropping off a little bit, but now they've they might join, be joined by Sean Dower in the 62 after being shuffled so far down. Look at this! Where did this purple car come from? Some people understand plate racing more than others, and Sean Dower seems to be one of those aliens who gets it more than the rest of us, and he. Look at him go. He's just on a tear. He's gotten that damage repaired. He's gotten those new tires. And he's right up there in this lead pack. What a race for him. What an eventful race. I thought that, that maybe he was uh, incredibly unlikely to try and take the win. But now that he's back up at the front pack as our top drivers continue to switch around between the top and bottom lane. Braden Johnson, who was up top, comes down low ahead of Jacoby. We are starting to see a breakaway form from about the top 14, 15, actually. Then we have a gap to Mike Donahue now, about half a second. Asa Hunter is alongside Colin Carroll there in that second pack as they try and claw their way back up front. But a lot of these trucks back further back have a, a little bit of damage, so they're going to have a hard time making their way back up there. I wouldn't put anything past uh, this second group from what we saw last time where the second group actually did run down and eventually challenge for the top spot. They're doing it again. Austin Hunter with a huge head of steam. 194 going into the turn. Whoa, oh goodness. Sean Dower into the wall and now he's spinning around. This might be the big one. It is indeed the big one. Everybody tries to check up. A few trucks do manage to stay out of it. But Dower, I think, tried to make it three wide. Let me see exactly how this started. Could be wrong here. No, it wasn't. It was a it was a car and or a truck in front of him. Tyler Pluff, who had a wobble. He checked up, and that 
put uh, Dower up into the outside wall of three. So Buff is going to get away with that one, whereas Dower really had nowhere to go, and they, it, it, Pluff ended up clipping his front left with Dower's, with, well, clipping Dower's front left with his right rear, and that really caused a big problem there. If you want a good view, Gregory Dice, number 57, had, uh, did a great job. I think he did make a little bit of contact with the, the uh, no, actually, I think he maybe did not, because I thought maybe he got into the back of Jeffrey Smith, Let's see, we'll watch from on board. This will give us a good indication of actually if he touched him or not. So as they go down the back straight here, that inside line gets a really good run. And up ahead of the truck that's right in front of him, which was the 74, this this accident is going to start to occur. And he's going to, Dice is going to make some amazing moves here to try and get through it. I mean, he, he gets on the binders hard. Watch this. He sees it start to happen. He gets out of it. That's where he just nearly touches the monster-sponsored truck in front of him. Wow. And just what a move comes out dice. smelling like roses. Roses and tire smoke. Sounds like a perfume we need to uh, market to race car drivers. So we're going to watch it one more time here. Yeah, it looks like Sean Dower's eventful day is going to come to an end now. Wow, he really hit that wall hard. You can see from that front camera just that his front end was way in the air as he got airborne there because of the contact. The highs and lows of plate racing. And we should report that uh, with that caution thrown, Johnson was in the lead, Jacoby was in second, and Holly was in third. Now Melvin and Haynes are fourth and fifth with them. Those are our cast of characters that are up at the front, and we, and I wonder, we shouldn't see anybody pit. I wonder if we could get a replay of the 45's pit stop. I've never seen a truck be able to go into the pit lane just now. I've never been able to see the truck go into the pit lane at that angle and be able to take surface. Take a look with me. This is the, 40, this is the 45 truck. Uh, Brian Brogan, yeah. Service. Yeah, oh, there I we think just, just saw the end of it. One more time, it's just really interesting to see the angle of attack that you could get into your pit box here. He's he's just got a very thin left front tire changer, so he's uh he he uh, figured it out perfectly. That's almost a 45 degree angle to the wall. What an interesting pit stop there. That's why he's number 45. I mean, come on. Anyway, it says Brogan's back out in 18th position. Uh, let's see. I don't think we have the lights out quite yet. I think we got another lap around. Do we not? Ooh. Brogan trying to get those repairs, I believe, done. So we've got, we've got another two laps to go here under caution. I think we've got time to take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel while we wait for them to sort everything out behind the pace car. We'll come back after this for the final few laps here in the PRL NASCAR Truck Series.
Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. We are getting ready to watch the final laps here in round three of the Precision Racing League's NASCAR Truck Series. Currently here at Daytona, they have only had two cautions. This one, the most recent, and uh, it's taken out some major players. Sean Dower, really one of the big ones that we thought could be in contention for victory, came back after a, a flubbed pit stop and then unfortunately got caught up in big wreck. But Jacoby has been one to watch as he's been up at the front. So is Johnson. Holly, of course, has been in the mix. Melvin, late in the race, came into this. Can he stay with it? Pace car is in. Green flag is out. We go racing once more at Daytona, Adam. Yeah, these drivers really struggling with the tire wear here. We had a couple, quite a few laps of green, but with the fuel situation the way it is, they don't want to come in. So as these drivers get off the line, they're going to have to really hang on to these trucks in these opening laps. As, wow, that inside line gets extremely loose going into the corner and almost comes up into the outside line. But the outside line really bunched together, led by Jason Jacoby, but he's got no pace. They're really going backwards now. Good for Jacoby. Six laps to go. Five and a half laps to go, really. As up at the front, it is Braden Johnson in the number 36. Excuse me, in the number 77, leading the way. They come through three and four. That high line continuing to try to push to see if they can get back into the mix. They've got a little bit of a run now, but for a while it wasn't looking very good for them. But it looks like Jacoby's getting a good bit of pace, a good bit of push from behind now as that bottom lane really spreading out. Jacoby at least up to the third car in line. Holly is the next one. He gets the good shot off of the banking, coming out of two onto the super stretch. He's being pushed by Melvin in the 37 behind. Oh, oh, but Melvin has to check up as he almost loses it coming into the corner. He got extremely loose coming into three, and that's going to really get be trouble for Jake's and Jacoby. He has to slip in behind Rob Haynes, and that's going to ruin his opportunity. The three wide as they go through the front stretch. That was Melvin on the high side of that three wide. Houndshell, Jake Houndshell shooting the middle to make it work. A risky move pays off as he's now on the high side of water. Meanwhile, up at the front, uh, up at the front, we've had a change. Bradley Holly is your new leader. He got pushed his way up there by Haynes. Uh, sorry if I cut you off there, Adam. No, that's fine. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. Dominic Bajin came through the middle of three wide as well and actually got into Andrew Melvin. So Andrew's gone way back now, but that outside line is not working out for Jacoby. He's still going backwards. He's got to find a gap down low. He's going to have to start playing selfishly. Oh, oh we no. got sure Jacoby's around. Jacoby's around and more cars getting involved. Fetty is out as he runs into Houndshell. A big mess through the trioval. Car flipping, that is Jeffrey Ford on his lid. That all started with a nearly three wide situation with Jacoby. Actually, no, it wasn't a three wide situation. Jacoby just got a, a bad shove from Houndshell. That pushed him inside. He got T-boned by Wal Walter. Walter then found himself on the inside of another three wide situation. It was Kevin Fetty who was suddenly pushed into Houndshell once again. And then from there, the dominoes fell. And Jason Jacoby just getting a huge push in the worst place, which is on the exit of the corner. He just had nowhere to go there. And they said Jacoby taking a big shot to the door, but it was Kevin Fetty who got turned after that. Yeah, that's just getting into that left rear quarter panel on the exit of the corner is the worst place to try and bump draft somebody. And man, this wreck collected everybody. I think one driver who really had the luckiest run, we're going to watch Fetty here, is Dominic Bajin. I think we've got enough time for Dominic's view. Watch Dominic Bajin try and navigate this. He realizes the accident's happening ahead of him and hits, hits the binders. So watch as he watches Jacoby get turned. 
and he hits, hits, he hits the binders, and then he watches everything happen ahead of him. He just dives down low, and he gets almost turned there, but manages to save it. What a move from Bajin. Yeah, and the thing was, is he could see both almost separate incidents happening. The, the J Jacoby spin right in front of him, and then the second one happened right in front of him. He's got to be thinking, how many wrecks do I need to avoid? And he somehow winds up in fifth place because of that as we come back live. Now, they are behind the pace car with two to go. And the lights are not out. Now, we were trying to... And it looks like we do have a green-white checker. We were trying to check on this before, and we uh, I can confirm. Uh, and they, they are going to do one green-white checker we're seeing. This will be very interesting to see what happens here. Bradley Holly in the lead. I mean, like this is this is the place where he's been the strongest is the restarts in the lead. So he really has a good opportunity here. But at Daytona, you can't just run away with it like you can at other tracks. He's going to have to be sure to not get too far out ahead of Rob Haynes in order to try and take this win. And remember that if we get another caution, that's going to end the race. So everyone's going to try have to try and get stay clean here. That's the big question, is can they actually get to that next white flag? If they get to the white flag, there will be no caution, and they race to the green. So they only technically need to go one lap uh, under green. And believe it or not, after all of those cautions and all those accidents and each big one that we've had, the last one being the biggest, we only have 11 trucks right now that do not have significant damage. That is just wild. What a change between the start of the race and the end. We literally had no cautions through the first half of it. And then suddenly we've now had three in the final bit. And I can tell you that the clock is ticking down to zero, but I believe we should be able to finish with that green-white checkered, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they will get one attempt before the clock runs out, so... These guys are really going to have to keep it clean. And believe it or not, Jason Jacoby, even after getting spun to cause that wreck, is only back in seventh position. But he does have significant left side door damage. So we'll see whether or not that affects his pace going into this green-white checker. They're heading down the backstretch now. I believe the light should go out this time by. I'm just going back on my screen to... Uh, check to kind of watch and see that uh, accident with Jacoby and I think that left side damage was mostly from when he got t-boned he didn't hit anything else he just spun it around and kept it going not sure how much that arrow damage is going to affect him over two laps where they're barely going to get wound up to full speed Yeah, I believe, I believe they'll be able to get the green flag if the pace lights go out this time. Well, we're getting the full super speedway treatment tonight, Adam, as we've had green flag runs, we've had spates of cautions, we've seen drivers lose it trying to pit in, we've seen big ones, and now we're going to see a dash to the finish for the victory. And it turns out Dominic Bajin's three-wide move that he made at the beginning of that last run that I was talking about off-screen, that ended up being the decider between him making it through that accident that came afterward or being wrecked on the side of the road. So Dominic Bajin starting back in the fifth position. He's in a really good spot here to try and make an upset if that top line doesn't get moving. The start of the broadcast, I talked about the devil being in the details. And we've brought it up plenty of times before how we can see which drivers, because this is a uh, a stock setup on all the cars. This is They're all set up exactly the same. Which drivers know those little things they need to do to get forward, know how to deal with the traffic, know how to deal with the craziness, to get in line, to push hard, to stay out of trouble. And we're seeing them up at the front right now. But what about that last little detail? Finishing the race before anybody else does. The one thing you have to do to take the victory. Who is going to do that today? 
the Mustang pace car takes them out of turn four here at Daytona International Speedway and will peel in. We get one shot to finish under green. If they wreck on this first lap back, we are going to finish under caution and whoever is in front takes it all. Green flag is out. Holly has control of the field, but does not get away terribly well. Rob Haynes got a good start, but he's got no support on that top lane. Brayden Johnson's the only one helping him out. So Jason Jacoby's got a decision to make back there in the, in the sixth position. He decides to go high. We'll see whether or not Rob Haynes can hang on to it. Jason Jacoby actually stays low. Rob Haynes not being able to hang on to it. So this is good for, for Bradley Holly. Thomas Sink doing a great job in what is uh, now second place, or should be second place. My timing and scoring doesn't seem to be catching up to me. I suppose it's due to the green-white checkered. So far, so good, though. There's a little bobble up to the high side. Oh, and we got three wide. This is not looking good. We need a few more feet, guys. Oh, and I don't think we're going to make it because Jacoby gets spinned. Still no Still green. caution. Richter. Still no flag. Richter also the one involved. We are going to go all the way to the finish, but Jacoby is now out of it. He spins off the inside for the second time. Holly is your leader currently. Sink in second place. Dominic Fajin in third. Braden Johnson slots back in down to the low side. You have no friends now. Uh, Rob Haynes is coming up the outside from the back of the line. Can Bradley Hawley take this one home? They come up to turn three now, still hugging that low line. Thomas Sink staying right behind. From the back of it, Rob Haynes discovers that with no help from behind, he cannot get a run up to the Six front. Nine, do the something here, Six. Oh, oh he's in turn. Hawley's out of it. Machine. Dominic Machine's going to win it. Is he, though? He's coming up to the line, being chased. And it no, was Brayden, Brayden Johnson. Johnson. Unbelievable finish. It was one one thousandth of a second between them. Three wide across the line. What an unbelievable finish for the PRL truck series. Look at this. Just unbelievable. All three trucks in a row. And between the three of them, there were four one thousandths of a second from first to third. What a podium. What an unbelievable finish. So as we come back live, uh, Braden Johnson's got to be pretty happy with this one we'll come back after a quick break we'll have driver interviews as well as the unofficial results and stick around because on screen you're going to see all the upcoming races here on the gsrc Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. 
I said that we were getting the full super speedway treatment. We've really got the full super speedway treatment. How about three wide to the line and look at the gaps between our podium. Braden Johnson won it coming from what I believe was either third or fourth in line out of turn four. I'd have to even go back and check. Rob Haynes finishes just two one thousandths behind in second place. And the Dominic Bajim, who for a brief moment was up at the front and in the lead, falls back to third. Five one thousandths of a second behind at the line. Sink winds up in fourth when all is said and done. Tyler Pluff, who uh, picks up the scraps, gets a top five. How about Mitchell Clark taking sixth place? Mike Donahue with seventh behind him. And then it is Bradley Hawley finishing in eighth position. Uh, Josh Daniels takes home a ninth with Kevin Fetty rounding out your top ten. We have Mike Richter coming home in 11th position and Jason Jacoby after getting spawned in the last lap coming home unbelievably in 12th position and that's because he was the last one on the lead lap. In 13th is Frank Pichak, 14th is Jeffrey Smith, and we have John Labath in the 15th position followed by Adam Zenke in 16th, Eric Roberts in 17th position 5 laps down, Andrew Melvin behind him in 18th position also 5 laps down along with Brian Brogan and Brandon Walter rounding out your top 20. 21st goes to Colin Carroll with Jeffrey Ford taking P22, Jason Hounshell in 23rd, Austin Hunter was in 24th position, Gregory Dice in 25th, and Jake Hounshell in P26. Last car to see the checkered flag was Jean-Francois Champagne, six laps down, 27th. Then you've got our DNFs for the day, Sean Dower, Robert Besaw, William Hartman, Nicholas Hunter, Brennan Chatley, Scott Metcalf, Colton Lane, Nicholas Delp, and Charles Sumner with a, an early retirement for them. We have our uh, winning podium, I believe, with us as we get ready to talk to Braden Johnson. Braden, from fourth coming out of turn four to taking the victory, what does that feel like? I was ecstatic. It was awesome. It was some great racing from these boys out here. At, at what point did you realize you got the victory? Because that had to be confusing with how close those margins are when you came across the line. I realized it after because I had my relative up, and I looked down and it said first, and then I was just shouting with joy. I can only imagine. You had to climb your way a little bit back forward, though. It wasn't a completely straightforward race. Uh, you were down caught in the middle of the pack uh, with a, a huge gap up the leaders. How did you manage to, to bring the group, the second group, back up to the front? It was just trying to do my best to stay in the draft and just pull the people with me. I mean, man, it was just so nuts. I'm still trembling and shaking. <laughs> I think I would be trembling a little bit, too. Uh, well, I, congratulations on the win. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Absolutely. I'd like to thank everybody out here who uh, had a good hard race out there. It was a blast. I'd like to thank uh, my teammates, Andrew, Tyler Pluff, Jeffrey Smith, uh, Jason Jacoby, and I'd like to thank uh, FEG PC. I'm running on one right now, and I think it was the fastest machine out there tonight. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to y'all for putting on this broadcast because I watched the last one I was in, and it was absolutely great. And Thank y'all. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the kind words. That was our winner, Braden Johnson. Clearly still a little shaken up by what was a thrilling finish, both from our side and his. Uh, the second place, the car and a little bit of disappointment was Rob Haynes. And Adam is going to ask him about the reverse of this. Yeah, Rob, after coming off the corner in such a good position, you come home in second, in second, just two one thousandths off the lead. What, what does it feel like to come so close to victory? Man, Adam, it's uh, it's showing one one thousands on my screen, so uh, I'm going to take that one. But that was uh, that was crazy. I was fifth coming off uh, turn four there, and I, d I didn't expect anything to happen. It looked like we were going to finish there in a straight line, and uh, man, it, everybody kind of got uh, tossed up there and cut through the middle, and man, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll take that. So after spending the first half of the race kind of back in the in the bottom of the pack, then you find yourself up in sixth position for the restart after our first yellow flag. Was that your strategy all along to hang out in the back until pit stops? Yeah, I had some teammates back there. Adam uh, 
we were all trying to just get through this thing. We, we expected uh, the big one, you know, as everybody does here at Daytona. And uh, that didn't kind of come, so we just kind of hung around, uh, you know, a couple seconds back and eventually closed in on the front pack there. And, man, uh, some that wreck on going on to pit road there, that was a little bit crazy. I know that messed up a lot of guys' nights, and uh, some guys got some EOLs because of uh, heading on to pit road there. But, hey, that's part of racing, and it happens. It's happened to me before, and uh, I'm just thankful for uh, for where I finished out. Awesome. Well, it may not be a win, but a podium is a great finish, and you provide some great entertainment tonight. Is there anyone you want to thank tonight? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the guys are over at Whataback. Um fantastic teammates to have uh great coming into an event like this and knowing that you got guys that'll you know wait up for you or uh you know give you a push to where you need to be and uh, i'm thankful for that and establish established traffic control etc for uh, putting on this event uh you guys at gsrc it, great job i watch the replays every time and i freaking love it um i'm sure everybody watching is enjoying it shout out to the fans uh, and of course precision uh, racing league uh for putting this stuff on this is fantastic um braden on the win way to go awesome well thanks for talking to us rob and we hope you have better luck next week all right it looks like joe has caught up with our third place runner dominic Pagine. hey guys dominic hey for a few hundred feet, you led the race, but you wound up in third. Uh, I mean, that was split second, everything happening around you. Did your mind even have time to process what was going on? Uh, man, the only thing I could think about is do not get wrecked, do not get wrecked, please. And uh, at the end, I was just happy I finished in the top three. But, man, it was fun. The last few laps were kind of crazy, but I had such a blast was the main. Yeah, you almost were not a part of that that finish. Talk about the incident before that where you escaped disaster having to cut through the trioval. Yeah, uh, I think we went three wide a few uh, corners back for like two row. And uh, when we came back after turn four, I don't know what happened exactly, but it seems like somebody got uh, the bumper of somebody else. And as soon as I saw that, I tried to get on the, uh, like the trioval and miss it but i think somebody hit my uh my left door i'm not sure who it was but I, I got lucky the car stood straight and i was able to come back on the track obviously the racing gods have smiled upon you here at a super speedway but we're going to a mile and a half uh next round at kentucky do you usually fare pretty well at those cookie cutters uh, yeah, I'm not doing bad usually when I, uh, doing official races. I've got some bad luck, uh, this year on the, uh, the league and uh, a few other races last year. I'm just going to be, uh, hoping not to get caught, caught in, uh, something early on and just try to make my way at the back, uh, from the back, probably at the end. of. That sounds like a fair strategy to me. Well, congratulations on a podium, even if it wasn't a win today. I think you can't be too disappointed with 17 to third. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. It was uh, such fun watching you guys. Uh, thanks again. That was Dominic Bajin, our third place finisher. It's going to wrap up our interviews for tonight. We're going to thank a few people before we go, especially our sponsors, both Established Traffic Control. You can find them at establishtraffic.com if you want to check them out. And, of course, to Whataback Racing. Uh, again, one of the big teams out here. You heard some of our drivers uh, are on that team that finished on the podium. And they were talking about uh, all that they do to try and make this whole thing happen. So congrats to them for a good finish today. Also, thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Adam, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on social media. Twitter is at GSR Channel. Facebook is Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram is GSRC underscore Graham. If you head on over to our YouTube page, make sure and hit the big red button that says subscribe if you already haven't done that yet. That'll make sure you don't miss a moment here on the GSRC. As we mentioned, we're heading down to just across the river from where I'm from, down to Sparta, Kentucky. That'll be Wednesday, July 10th at 8.50 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard, see you on the track. <laughs>